This year is the World War I comm commemoration of the beginning of the First World War, and with the Cradley and Dis District Ex Service Association, we thought that using that as a focus uh, for the churchyard would be really helpful. And these ex-military chaps, they're all men really, are very keen to make graves accessible so that the community continues to respect, continues to honour the memory of those who, as they say, fought for the freedom, our freedom, uh, in this place. Oh, I remember Uncle Al, hold on, okay. it was a, just before he went back the last time we seen him, he come and said, I'll give me all a kiss, we held his rifle, and he went, and uh, he went back, and the next time we heard, he was killed on Boxing Day in Holland. Even they had children today look after his grave. They liked him that much. He was a red cap with military police. I mean, dying on just the day before Christmas is, is dead, wasn't it? An aeroplane come over, the bloke, he come down and they machine gunned him. He was riddled. He was killed outright. Then we got in touch with the mum and dad. We looked after their graves up there when they died. We looked after the graves for his mum and dad and mum used to come up. Then his sister died and he had his name on her grave as well. My dad was, uh, was named John Leslie Cox. Some called him John and some called him Jack. He was in the First World War and then uh, in the Second World War, of course, he was too old, but he went in the, um, in the Home Guard. He was a very uh, private person, really. He never spoke much about his war experiences. He was a signaller. He had to go out and r repair the wires with the bull bullets whistling around, you know, and the dead people around. He's uh, buried in the churchyard, down by the uh, fence, by the school, uh, in that row across the bottom there. And um, of course a lot of his family is buried in the, in the churchyard as well. The Oak Cross was donated to the churchyard by the then headmaster of the Cradley Church of England School, uh, Mr Jacquis, and it was set up um, after the war as a commemoration uh, to there were 52, I think it was, uh, Cradley Church of England schoolboys who lost their lives in the war. And so all the trees in the avenue were planted, one in remembrance of each of those boys, and poplar trees around the edges also in memory of people who lost their lives. And so it provides a focal point. As you come down the avenue, there's this great big wooden cross there, which provides a focal point um, for people in terms of remembering World War I fallen. My maiden name was Bentley. My father was Charles Henry Bentley. My dad was in the army. He was in the Green Hours before it was changed to the South Staffs. He did his, his training in, in Ireland. He was there for about seven months before they were shipped over to France. And I think the first job when you go into France what they had to do was to bury all the dead. Because I, I always remember him saying it was an horrible, horrible job and it made them all sick. All the while he was nearly in the army, he was just scout, they used to send him off. He's been over farms and everywhere and fields and they've had to get back to the to the regiment to let him know what's happening and the sniper got him for two days in the ditch, he was up to his neck in water for two days. Until I got the regiment and the regiment come back and rescued him. The resistance picked him up and if it hadn't been for his Bible, they would have shot him. His Bible saved him. It was all written in English, so they knew then as it was English. Our dad was Harry Dawes. He was born in 1919. He joined the forces in 1942 as a Royal Engineer, and then went into the Paris and moved out to Palestine at the end of the war and, and came back in 1947. He was 78 when he died, you know, I mean, to say he'd gone all through the war and, you know, and and Paris as well, and he got no injuries, no nothing wrong with him. He just his heart just give out, and he just dies, and all that's all. The possibility of having places to just come and sit, be quiet, remember, uh, is important for folk. And if the churchyard becomes a, a kind of parkland, we're not looking for manicured gardens. We could never uh, sustain that, but a, a nice sort of wildlife, pleasant place to be, and where you can come and sit and be and reflect. I think that is in the Christian tradition. It's a gift to the community. 
and it encourages people in busy lives, really, to come and just stop and reflect and reconnect with nature. My father is Horace Slater. He served in the Second World War, the Royal Engineers. His army number is 1909104. War was declared in the September. Uh, Dad went into the army in the February, I think, of 1940. Um, he got discharged in 1946, which was nearly 12 months after the war had finished, even in the East, because the cheap labour. Cheap labour, is it? As opposed to the First World War, when they discharged everybody and there was a shortage of work. I mean, there was plenty of work in Great Britain when yep. the Second World War finished, because yes, there were yeah. few places standing, standing untouched. Uh, untouched yeah. I can remember when he came on leave, sometimes, but, uh, but this, I never knew him for really for six years, because he was away six years, nearly near enough. He was on bomb disposal in Amazing, London. Amazing, you see, he used to do that. And he served in London, doing yeah. the Blitz. He used to have to go and help to get the, the dead out of the, the buildings, you see, and stuff like that. And he found children, and not a mark on them, but just killed by the blast. And I'm, I'm sure that's what did his nerves later on in life. I remember he came on leave once and he, he, he got his mess tins and they, they were full of chocolate. Full of chocolate. Strange, I, d I don't remember eating them. No, I don't know. He probably had me, he was the favourite. No. You couldn't get the chocolate during the war, was oh, yeah, That was, in that was a rarity, right? wasn't it? A rarity, that yeah. was to have chocolate. Yeah. He settled down all right, didn't he? He, he seemed to settle to. down, went back to his job with no counselling. Just no, went back to the job and that was it. He died at the age of 45 years and yeah. a month. I was three and a half when I moved to Cradley and I've been up that park ever since and I'm 82 now and it was there when I was a child before even the park was put into existence the way it is. It was just a, an isolated corner that was and I can remember certain bands but they didn't play very often. I can't understand, it might have only been on holiday times or something like that. The colliery was stopped, but the, the, oh, the wheel thing was still there and there was parts where they played football that were fenced off because <clears throat> it was dangerous and I know. You know what a band band stand used to look like? Yeah. Well, that's just what this one looked like. With the roll tie and work around it. <laughs> that's yeah. right. With Francis Crowell, Francis yeah, Crowell. Yeah. Up the corner yes. and up that corner and down on the bottom. And then and round the bottom was a, it got a little upright, round, you know, toy, toy, white toy, to stop you falling out. Okay. But it didn't have a roof to stop it. So they could only play when it was fine? No, the, um, the roof was put on all oh, some ten years after, I would imagine. It was took down when the war started for the for the scrap. For the scrap, I said that That's too. Right. About it was about lengths. thirty, about nineteen thirty-nine when it was took down. 40. Yes, but when if I can remember it being there when I was three or four. That's that's thirty-two, thirty-nine. That's only seven years. So I yeah. don't know how long. I don't think it had been up all that long. Is it? It's about no. ten years at the most. No, it wasn't up long. They they took it down for for the scrap. scrap well, they had everybody. Fencing because in them days there was a lot of uh, a lot of cast iron railings well, around yeah, uh, fences, little That's fancy things. And they, and they, uh, you know, had no option. They come and took them. They, they, yeah. they, they, you know, they had no option about whether they took them or not. No, they took out they front gate took off. It. If it was metal, they took it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. They took yeah. out front gate <coughs> off because that yeah. was cast iron. Yeah. Well, a lot of things <laughs> were cast iron in them days. Early days. Yeah. Uh, things, well, in point of fact, things ain't changed very much today, hasn't it? They, yeah, no, they were morally all the same size. I think they must have been met to a, a pattern of some sort, and, and that pattern fitted everybody. They were made in panels, they'd be panels, you know, to go around. Mm -hmm. And you go, know, well, there's so many panels. Well, there's got to be a minimum amount to get to get a, a band on, and. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it was no good having a six foot, a six foot diameter thing to put to and put yeah. a band stand, to put a band on uh, with about 15, 20, 14 or 15 uh, players in it. Uh, is so that one in um, Mary Stevens, obviously, big one, is it? Oh. <laughs>